form, this type of this type of message, and God brought it back to my remembrance. But I, I remember when I used to hear my grandmother saying, my mama saying, when I was just, you know, I would stay out all night and just work all week. And they say, boy, you need to sit down and get some rest. You need to rest. I like rest. What you mean? I slept for five hours yesterday. Why? I got rest. What you mean, grandma? I'm good. What? But I never understood that till I got older. Mama told me, wait till you get older, boy. You think you'd be running around like this all your life. Mm -mm. And so I learned that. And so when God brought me this message, he brought me to Jeremiah 31, 25. And it reads, everyone needs replenishing. Everyone needs refreshing. That's a beautiful depiction as well. Everyone needs refreshing, replenishing. And so in Jeremiah 31, 25, it says, For I have satiated the weary soul, and I have replenished every sorrowful soul. And so that word satiated is rava or rava, or rava in the Hebrew, which means to slake. And I, I had to even break that word down. I didn't mean slake was a, a weird word. So in the English, slake means to quench or to satisfy. And so, and then it says to th the thirst, occasionally of appetites of other, bathe, make drunk, take the field, satiate, abundantly satisfy, soak water abundantly. Satiated. For I have satiated, I have watered the weary soul. The weary soul. Weary is af in the Hebrew, which means faint thirsty or weary. God says, I, I will satiate the weary soul. Our soul, of course, we understand is our mind, our will, and emotions. One of my first questions, of course, when I'm, when I'm studying, okay, Holy Spirit, well, how does someone's soul get weary? How do we get weary? And, 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 and a lot of times what happens is we, we if we're not careful, if we, we can't be so uh, 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 steadfast on pouring into other people without replenishing or pouring into ourselves. We can't be so stretched out doing so many different things that we don't remember to rest. And sometimes what happens is, I always say what's not teach from the pulpit, what's not preached, is almost assumed that you're not supposed to have any. And so we get these, you know, you see some people, they run and 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 And I've met people. Some We even knew a youth pastor whose wife was like, listen, he spent more time with the youth than he do with his own children. And that should not be, there's a balance God has for us. There's a way in which God would have us to minister. There's things that God would have us to be mindful of because anything that the enemy can do to keep us in blindness or to keep us in ignorance he wants to wear us out. He wants to he wants to deplete us. He wants us to just walk away. There's many people who walked away from the ministry, not because they were incapable of doing what it was that God was telling them to do. It's because they forgot to do this for themselves. And so the Bible in Galatians, of course, a very familiar text, what depletes and drains us. Well, the Bible says, let us not grow weary while doing good or in well doing in, in, in the, in the, in the, uh, in the uh, King James Version. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Another translation says in King James, if we don't faint. Let us not grow weary. What? Well doing. Wait a second. You mean to tell me I can grow weary and well doing? Absolutely. Absolutely. There are people who have personalities who are draining. There are things who have, have, have draining effects to them. That's not to say that we don't deal with people. That's not to say that we don't minister to people. That's to say that we take the check in our own selves and say, okay, I need to maybe take two, three days away. I need to maybe, and, and see, when we say re, we say refreshing and replenishing, there's so many different facets to that, and we're going to get to that in the Word of God, and we're going to talk about those things. Some of those things is just going off. And we're going to see that, in, 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 uh, and I love what Jesus did, and we're going to go to it in the Word of God, where Jesus, oftentimes when he left the crowd, he went off by himself. He left the crowd. 
because here he is healing and here he is ministering. And we know that in the scripture, we'll look at it later, when the woman with the issue of blood touched him, one of the first things he said, virtue went out of me, power went out of me. Uh, there's people when you, I don't know if you ever had this experience, but when you're ministering, sometimes you feel more tired than if you work the eight hour shift. It's because God is using you. But now we have to be careful and we have to understand that ministry is also replenishment and refreshing. God, I need some refreshing. I need some repl. I need some. I need some replenishing. So you know what? Sometimes I, I I don't need to be available to everybody. Sometimes I need to shut off the phone. Sometimes I need to go away because I need that just as much as I need to minister. And if I can't get this, then I'm no good to nobody. That's when you walk up to them people and they're angry at the front of the church. You know why they ain't had no rest? They upset. You ever seen somebody ain't got no sleep? Hey, praise the Lord. Hey, okay. You okay? Kind of passive aggressive with that praise the Lord, sisters. You know, and so, you know, bless him. Okay. You sure you want to bless him this morning? It's, don't sound like a bless you to me. And so those are those personalities where people there depleted. And the pastor, he's not paying attention. He's not giving those people rotation. Okay, sister been on the door. She's been doing the children ministry. She's been doing this. Sister, take take two weeks off. Go to the Bahamas, wherever you got to go. Go to uh, St. Pete Beat, whatever you got to do, but go somewhere and refresh yourself. And not just idleness, because in those moments, we still need to be in the word of God. We still need to be worshiping. We still, But we need that time to just... And so... You can be weary in well-doing. And so in 2 Timothy 1, verses 16 through 18, 2 Timothy 1, verses 16 through 18. The Lord grant mercy to the household of one Sephoris. Hmm? What was that? Once of course, oh, okay. <laughs> he often refreshed me <laughs> and was not ashamed of my chain. But when he arrived in Rome, he sought me out for very zealous, uh, zealously and found me. Sought me out very zealously and found me. The Lord grant to him that he may find mercy from the Lord in that day. And you know very well how many ways he ministered to me at Ephesus. Amen. Here is Paul attributing, he's attributing like praise to this, to this, to this man of God who ministered to him. For he said, he often refreshed me. There are some times when we, you, you, sometimes, I don't know, you, you have people in your life when you go around and you just, you just feel refreshed. Mm -hmm. You just, you just feel better. I, when I was sitting across uh, for my daughter at, at, at dinner one, you know, the other day, and she was like, Dad, I just feel so refreshed. I just feel so, I just needed this and everything like that. And I know because of the oppression that she was dealing with in the house, just sitting there and having a conversation, and I'm talking to her, and I'm encouraging her, she needed refreshing. So there are people who need refresh. We all need refreshing, you know. And, and so here is Paul showing us how we can be used in the ministry of giving someone refreshing in whatever way that looks like. Sometimes a, 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 a single mother needs a break. Sometimes, you know, this person over here just needs a word of encouragement. Sometimes this person needs you to tell them, give them the, give them the light. Listen, sis, you need to go take, go to the beach today. Go, 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 go buy yourself some shoes or do something that is going to, going to minister to you to where you can let your hair down, so to speak, and you can rest. And he's talking about when he arrived, he sought me out very zealously and found me. The Lord grant him that he may find mercy from the Lord in that day, that he may know well how he ministered to me at Ephesus. Ministry, ministry and refreshing, ministry and refreshing. We need ministering too. And so in Luke chapter 8, here's Jesus. Luke chapter 8, and this is in the Amplified Bible. I wanted to use this translation because I think the Amplified Bible for this particular text highlights uh, uh, some, some very good things here. And, well, actually, this is talking about the woman with the issue of blood. And we're seeing here, it says, Jesus said, who touched me? And they were all denying it, Peter and those who were with him, saying, Master, the people are the crowd 
are crowding and pushing against you. But Jesus said, someone did touch me because I was aware that power to heal had have, have gone out of me. When the woman saw that she had not escaped notice, she came trembling and fell down before him. She declared in the, in the presence of all the people the reason why she had touched him and she had been immediately healed. He said to her, daughter, your faith, your personal trust and confidence in me has made you well. Go in peace, untroubled, undisturbed, well-being. Here Jesus was, he wasn't even aware, well, he was aware, but it wasn't like he laid eyes on her. He knew someone had touched him, and he said, not virtue, of course, we know it's power. He said, power has gone out of me. God uses us in the same way. We have the power of the Holy Spirit on the inside of us, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't take effect on us when we're ministering, when we're laying hands, when we're doing things for wherever it is, whether it's the homeless, whether we're going to the elderly, whether we're going to the youth, all of those things expend energy. It expends our, 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 our strength. And so Jesus here is letting us know that you can't minister, truly minister like that and nothing, be, and nothing leave you. Something's going to leave you. And the reason why it's important to understand that is to know that you have a tank that needs to be refilled. You have something that you just can't go, 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 go. You see them people, they say, oh, you, you can go over there, you can go over there, you can do this, you can do this. I said, whoa, 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 time out. Because nobody's teaching. Wait a second. So, so you need to rest down. Brother, you need to take a break, Pastor. You need to go ahead. You and your wife, y'all, y'all go over there. Y'all just hang out for the weekend. Y'all just de-stress or whatever. Not to say it's negative stress. You know what I'm saying? But there is a power that leads you, and we have to understand that so that the enemy cannot bring about that, that, that sour lemon people in there. You know what I'm saying? Now you angry and bitter, and people wonder, well, hey, Pastor, praise the Lord. Brother, okay. <laughs> um, we're going to go somewhere else today. <laughs> praise the Lord. Yeah. Because uh, you kind of scary this morning. Okay. And so... The promise of refreshing. The promise of refreshing is found in Proverbs 11, 25. The generous man is a source of blessing and shall be prosperous and enriched. And he who waters will himself be watered, reaping the generosity he has sown. He who waters shall be watered. He who waters shall be watered. So God is saying that when we, when, we, when we bless someone, when we're ministering, that same replenishing, that same refreshing is coming back to us. And that was my prayer. I felt kind of, I, I, I don't know what it was. I know that there was some spiritual stuff going on. I felt like there was a wrestling. And I said, Lord, I, I need some replenishment right now. I need some strength right now because I feel like there's some stuff going on in the atmosphere. And God brought me this word. He said, no, you're, you're not in a strange place. You're in a familiar place. And you need to understand what replenishing is, what refreshing is. And so there's a scripture. That's, that's it. Mark 6. How do I get refreshed, refreshed and replenished? Get away. It's not the commercial. You want to get away? That's, uh, this is actually scripture. We're going to see it right here. Jesus, yeah. They, they probably took this from Jesus. Uh, <laughs> commercial. And he said to them, Okay, this is a different translation. It says, come aside by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they did not even have time to eat. In my translation, it says, in the King James translation, it said to them, come ye yourselves apart into the desert and rest a while. For there were many coming and going and had no leisure so much as to eat. I'm going to read down into uh, verse uh, 20, 32. And they departed into a desert place by ship privately. There's another scripture. I wonder why I don't have it up there. But there is another portion of scripture in the Gospels. This is your homework where Jesus, right after he was ministering, 
he went off into pray into the into the mountains. And so one of the things that I easily recognize with that, it talked about Jesus going, he was healing it. He was healing in the crowd. He was praying and ministering to people. He was delivered. He was, he was casting out devils and all of these different things. But he himself went off. And it says often. That's one of the words that I said. He didn't say he, this was just one time. This was an isolated incident. No, he often went off. And he left the disciples. He didn't bring anyone with him. He went off to himself. This is important that we get away. And then we have to have an understanding. People have to understand the word of God that this is biblical. If you don't understand this principle, if you don't understand the principle of rest and of getting away and of refreshing, of replenishing, then we're not going to last long in ministry. We're not going to last long because we're going to get, like you said, worn out. Be not weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. How do I keep from fainting? I need refreshing. Well, how does a person keep from fainting if they're in the bed? They keep drinking water. They keep replenishing themselves. Go ahead. Uh, Luke 5, 16. Amen. In the New King James Version, he says, it says, So he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. Praise God. Amen. That was... Luke 5:16. Praise God. He often, often, Jesus would often do this. The other thing in a, how do I get refreshed and replenished is in, in Psalms 46:10. Be still. Be still and know that I'm God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Thank you, sister, for the advice. Be quiet. Sometimes people, and people don't understand stillness because they think that you not saying anything requires a response. And sometimes God says, no, still. We have to be obedient to him and not be subjected to the emotions and the whims of people. Jesus went off. He didn't, he, I'm sure he didn't apologize for going off. Well, I'm sorry, y'all, but I got to go now. I done healed all of y'all now, y'all. No, oh, Jesus, where you going? No, just please, just let me go. Jesus ain't, I guarantee you, Jesus ain't do none of that. April peace, I'm gone. I'm finna, you know, because you have to understand what God needs for you to do, for you to be effective. Everybody who, 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 who has the titles and in the ministry, they're, they're not effective. Some of them are not effective because they're out of place. Some of them are not effective because they haven't recognized that I need a season where I need to get away. I need to be silent. I need to not do anything. And there's times in our lives where God says you being silent and away is okay. And so we look in Isaiah 40, 31. But those who what wait on the Lord. Sometimes, if you're in a waiting room, I don't know if you have, you've been in a hospital wait. There's, there's really not a whole lot of people talk. People just waiting on whatever it is. Sometimes waiting is, is silent. Sometimes waiting is, is off to the side. I'm waiting. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. If I want strength and I want it renewed, that means if strength is being renewed, that means there's something that left me. Strength being renewed, that I got to wait on God for the renewing. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I want that type of endurance. God is saying for us to be able to endure the race. We need to understand the balance of being able to rest and be silent and be removed. All of those things are a part of ministry. Jesus was our model. He showed us. I'm going off because I was minute, but I need. And so waiting. The temptation when you're waiting is you ever see you ever see people they got they got to be doing something. They got, I got to, I got to, I, can't, I just can't sit here. I got to call somebody. I got to do. No 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 no. Sometimes we just gotta wait on the Lord. Waiting, waiting. And then we have to listen. So now, if I'm if I'm if I'm if I'm, if I'm away, 
and I'm silent and I'm waiting, I still need to be listening for his voice. And so when I'm listening for his voice, and oftentimes that's what the enemy tries to do. He tries to keep us in the hustle and bustle in the crowd. And, and, and I was there. I was there the whole time as I look back in the stuff that I went through. I didn't have to go through if I had to just did that. The first two, sit down somewhere and be quiet. And listen to what he would say. He sent an evangelist up to me and, and Ebor said, I don't even hear that because I'm too busy. Hey, brother, this, I, I look back at this and it brings chills. The same people. Now, th this is back when it's like 860, 70-some thousand people out there. How y'all find me every weekend? <laughs> I'm like, wait a second. Y'all got GPS on me. So y'all stop that. Man, y'all looking for me. I'm sitting these same brothers. They found me three times. Three times, the third time he got me, and I don't, I didn't even know what was going on because they had called me to pray, and I'm just obedient, form of godliness, denying the power of God, but I had a form of God. I'm gonna take your track, I'm gonna put it in my pocket, I'm gonna stand here and pray, and then I just went on about my day like it was nothing and everything. I got home that night, and I'm crying in my room uncontrollably. Lord, forgive me. I didn't know then what God was already starting to work in me. If I had a did that, just sat still. And just waited on him. If I had just sat still and waited on him, I would have recognized what God was trying to say. I wasn't listening. I wasn't listening. I sat still long enough to get the message, but then went back out the next week. And so in, in, in Proverbs 1.5, a wise man will hear. We can stop right there. A wise man will hear. A wise man will hear. You don't have to warn somebody that's wise too many times. You just tell them one or two times, and they just see some stuff going. And then they'll, they'll kind of real, okay, I, I, I see. A wise man will hear and increase in learning. Why? Because he's going to truly listen. He who has an ear, let him hear. And a man of understanding will attain wise counsel. Wise counsel. We know that you got wise counsel and you got foolish counsel. Now, Job, he was he was one that said, I'm not going to listen to that foolish. You saw my curse God and die that foolish. So he understood the difference between wise counsel and foolish counsel. I wish Adam had to make the same choice, but that's not the story. That's why we're here today. But <laughs> so, but Adam neither. Adam, you know, he, and then God said, what did he say? He said, because you have hearkened to the voice of your wife. He said, you could listen to me and it still would have been all right. I would have dealt with Eve, but we would have been okay because the lineage comes through you. You're the head, so if you listen and check her, then it's going to be all right because we still got that that thing, that order thing down. But when you listen to her, no, nah, I can't. Mm -mm. Now everything is jacked up. So a man of understanding will attain wise counsel. Thank God for discernment. Thank God for, for confirmation and, and, and different things that God gives us. These are things that help us remain refreshed and, and, and obtain replenishment. Wise counsel. Wise counsel. Then the other thing is to, of course, we need to meditate. And not just meditate. Some people, you know, that's just a new thing. You got yoga and all that other kind of stuff. No, I ain't talking about that type of I tell people, if you talk about meditate, meditate on what? <laughs> the Bible says whatever things are good, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, think on these things. He didn't say think on some Buddha, some mystical stuff like that. No, meditate on the word of God. And so in Psalms 1 and 2, Excuse me, 1 verse 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. Meditates day and night. That's just keeping the, this, when, when, when you're refreshing yourself, when you're replenishing yourself, you're receiving wise counsel, now you're meditating on the word of God, you're replenishing yourself. Psalms 19.7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Let me read it out of here. James here. Psalms 19, 7. 
The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making the wise simple. And that other, that converting the soul is also a tr translated restoring. So restoring the soul. The word of God restores us. There's been many times where I, 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 I've been going through different things and I just, not going through in that way, going through and don't even know, just, it's just today is just off. I don't know what it is about today, but I feel off and I feel like this. And off the God will bring me right back to, you just need to get in your word. You just need to pull away. You just need to be still. You just need to meditate on my word. You just need to listen to what I'm saying. And I'll set everything back in order. I'll even reveal to you what's really going on. Really what's going on is you need to spend more time with me. That's often the source of my unstableness. My imbalance is that I haven't spent enough time with God. Which brings back to getting in his presence. It's a part of refreshing. Getting, get in his presence. And what does that look like? We want to talk about that. In Luke chapter 10, verse 41 and 42, a familiar text. Here's Jesus. Paint the picture. Jesus is at this home and you got Martha and Mary and we know that we know the story. Martha's busy. She's doing a lot of different things. Not to say that what she was doing wasn't a good thing. Not to say that what she was doing wasn't noble or wasn't honorable. It just wasn't what she needed to be doing in that season in her life. You can be doing the right thing in the wrong season. And it not work out for you. You, you feel more deplete just like the person that's they've been up to the door too long. It's out, it's out of season and that's why they, they got that attitude. It's, it, nobody was check, Nobody was saying, hey, you know what? She's been up there for six months and she we need to rotate her because she might be burnt out. She's been back there with the, with the babies and the children's ministry and then I, I, I think she needs to come over and do something else. Let's do that. And so, no one said it. In this, in, this, in this particular instance, some people they take pride in that, but they take pride in the position uh, because it's a title and not in the ability to be a servant. There's a difference. Because the Bible talks about the, the shepherd and the hireling. The hireling, basically, he doesn't have any care for the sheep. It's just a position. And so he's going to do it, whether it be dogmatic, whether I got to beat him upside the head, whatever I got to do, I, I, I'm doing it. But there, there, there's, no, there's no love there, so to speak. There's, there's no, there's no uh, attributing uh, 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 of really a uh, uh, person being served. You see people, and, I, and, I, and I've seen them, you, when you got discernment, there's people who I've walked in the church, and I said, that's the one that should be at the front door. As a, man, as I've been in churches, man, where, where, where I walk in, and, 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 and it's one of the old mothers, hey, how you doing? I'm like, I go there just to see this smile, just to feel this embrace, because this is what it's about. I'm supposed to receive the love of God, but she ain't at the door. <laughs> Sister so-and-so at the door, praise the Lord, get your program. <laughs> okay, well, all right, fist bump, I ain't finna hug you. You know, because the season... And see, so Jesus recognizes, he says, Martha, Martha, you were troubled about many things. Many things. He didn't say ministry. He didn't say you're still troubled about sir. No, you're troubled about many things. There's some stuff that you brought on yourself. There's some stuff that you're doing. But one thing is needed. Isn't that, wow, that's a revelation, right? How we can be troubled about many things and God is saying, I just need you to do one thing right now in this season. Many things, but one thing is needed. Needed. Not, you, you got an option. This, this right here is needed and Mary has chosen that good part which will not be taken away from her. Mary was at his feet. This right here, he's saying you need to do this. 
you, you really need to have a, 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 a practice of doing this. Even on a daily basis, there should be time where we're devoting to God to where if we're starting off our day where it's just quiet and we're just alone and we're just resting and we're just listening and we're just seeking him and we're getting into his presence and we're meditating on his work to prepare us for what we got to go out and face. If we don't do that, that's called the armor of God. That's going out when you're on full, when, when, you can, when, you, when you can deal with some devils on the job, when you can deal with some opposition, you can deal with somebody to cut you off in traffic. The enemy wants you to go out there empty so somebody cuts you off in traffic and you can give them the right finger of a fellowship and then they see you later on and you're like, hey, sister, ain't you the one that was in you? No, that wasn't me. You know, and so he wants to ruin our testimony. And he wants us depleted. He wants us operating on E. And that's not God's design. He let Mary know she was doing what was needed. Martha, be troubled about many things, troubled. And so the other thing is encouraging ourselves. Encouraging ourselves, but not, not just encouraging ourselves for the sake of encouragement. Encouraging ourselves in the Lord. Encouraging ourselves in the Lord. And so in 1 Samuel chapter 30, 1 through 6. 1 Samuel chapter 30, 1 through 6. And it came to pass when David... And his men were come to Zil Ziklag on the third day. The Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire. And had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. That's a that's a that's a scene there. You 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 you. you, you. David, they had went off to war and they were going to fight and they were doing this noble thing for God. And when they came back, their family was taken. And that's a stressful. See, that, 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 that's, uh, uh, we're, 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 we're parents, so I can understand the stress when someone's taken. And, I, and I've seen mothers, you know, that the streets have got my babies, drugs have got my baby. They're taken. And so there's a stress. That comes on you. There, there's this, this, this overbearing burden that comes on you, and you get, and you get weighted down. And so, I, I, I can only imagine this wasn't just something that happened gradually. This was all of a sudden. My, my, my wife and my children. They're here, and now they're gone. The enemy has got them. Then David and the people that were with him lifted their voice and wept. Until they had no more power to weep. That's some weeping. They wept until they had no more power to weep. They felt powerless. Sometimes we feel powerless in those situations. We feel powerless when we when 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 when, when things are when, when they're gone. Things have happened. And David's two wives were taken captive. Ahinoam, the Jezreelitess. And Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carabite, Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed. Now it's one thing for that to happen. For your wife and your children to be taken. It's one thing for them to be out there and, and maybe they're incarcerated them on drugs, whatever it is, and then you got loved ones and they're just doing whatever. But it's another thing when it says, for the people spake of stoning him because the soul of the people was all grieved. They wanted to blame him for it. 